Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's try to expand things just a little bit more. Now what we're going to try to do is pick um, two values, one on either side of the mean. It doesn't have to be on either side of the mean. It could be both on the same side, doesn't matter. But what we're trying to do is, is say this. Let's pick a person at random and try to calculate the probability that the IQ of that person will fall between 85 and 105. Essentially, we're trying to find the area need the curve from here to here. And what we're going to do is we're going to divide it in two halves. We're going to first calculate the area over here. Let's call it area one. And then we're going to calculate the second area on the left side, call it area two. If, for example, we want to do it between 105 and 130 or something like that, then we want to calculate this area. This area subtract the two. In this case, we want the at to two, the two areas. All right, so how do we do that? Well, we need to find the z-scores of both of these. To find the z-score, we know that z is equal to the difference between the point x and the mean divided by the standard deviation sigma. So for the first value here, we can say that's equal to 105 minus 100 divided by 10 so that would be equal to 5 divided by 10, which is equal to 0 0.5. For the second value, so here, z equals 0 0.5, standard score. And over here, for the second point, we say z equals x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. In this case, it's 85 minus 100 divided by 10, which is minus 15 divided by 10, which is minus 1.5. So the z here is equal to minus 1.5. Essentially, when we use the table, it doesn't really matter if it's a negative or positive, you get the same value. So you just realize that the negative signifies that you're on the left side of the mean, the positive signifies that you're on the right side of the mean. Because here, after all, this is minus 1.5 times sigma, and this is plus 0 0.5 times sigma. That's all the sign signifies. So now we need to go and look at the table. And for a z equals to 0 0.5, for a z equals to 0 0.5, that corresponds to, right here, 0 point, so 0 0.19146, 0 0.19146, which is 19.146%. So the area underneath the curve here, A1, so this is equal to A1, represents 19.146% of the total area underneath the curve. Of course, you realize that this half is 50%, that half is 50%, and this slice right here represents a little bit less than 20% of the total area. For z equals 1.5, and notice it doesn't matter if you put, pick a negative or a positive, you get the same result, that corresponds to a value of 0 0.43319, 0 0.43319, which is 43.319%, and that represents area two. So that represents this area of the curve, which is a little bit over 43% of the total area. So now what you do is you add them together. A1 plus A2 is equal to 19.146%. And we add to that area two, which is 43.319%. When we add them up, we get five, one, that gives me six, four, that gives me two, one, that gives me six. So that's 62, oh, not dollars, 62.465%. So a little bit more than 62% of all the people fall between an IQ of 85 and 105. So if you're going to pick a person at random out of a normal distribution, you expect there's about a 62% probability that you'll pick a person with an IQ between 85 and 105. And so that is how we do it when we have two different limits. We have to calculate each limit separately. In this case, we have to add them. In other cases, we may have to subtract them. We probably need to do an example in the case we have to subtract one limit from the other. So let's do one of those on the next video.